What's good everybody? My name is Bella Nguyen and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be talking about how to get through nursing school and I'll be sharing some of my personal tips on how to study for these exams just based off of my personal experience. So without further ado, we're going to get right into it. So just some background information for you guys in case this is the very first video you're actually clicking on. Um, this is actually video three of my nursing series. I've made two other videos talking about how to get into nursing school and how to prepare for nursing school. So be sure to check that out if you're not already in nursing school. However, I feel like if you clicked on this video, then you must be in nursing school. But just in case, if you know anyone that, that would interest, please recommend my channel or recommend those videos to them. Additionally, I want to give you guys a heads up that I actually did a poll on my Instagram a while back asking for feedback from anyone that's in the nursing world or is interested in nursing to actually let me know what questions they have related to nursing and that I was going to incorporate it into a video so I want to give you guys a heads up that those questions will be incorporated in this specific video so for the people that actually ask me questions which it, it wasn't that many it was like less than a handful I will be addressing your questions so please stay tuned for that and just some background information on me I am a new graduate nurse I graduated from the University of Memphis Lowenberg College of Nursing I was at the main campus and I actually graduated this past May 2021 so all of this is pretty much still fresh in my mind and so I just want to share some of my personal experience and a little bit of research that I've done just to kind of help you guys out this video is mostly based on personal experience to be honest but I did collaborate with my nursing friends just to make sure that I hit all the important points that I believe in my personal opinion is crucial in getting through nursing school so my very first tip on how to get through nursing school is I want you to release any expectation you may have of yourself. So if you're just going into the very first semester, if you've not yet started or you just started and I'm catching you in the beginning weeks, release any expectation you may have on yourself because you very well may have been a 4.0 student coming into nursing school. However, nursing school is a whole different ball game. Everyone is pretty much on the same playing field. It's not like undergrad or when you're going through your prereqs to get into nursing school. So I really, really emphasize that you should really release any high expectation of yourself, meaning if you are going into this thinking that you have to be a straight A student because you've been a straight A student all this time. I want you to get rid of that expectation just because nursing school is, like I said, a different ball game. Everyone is pretty much very intelligent to some extent. I mean, that's how you got into nursing school. So when you're going into nursing school, you know, you're going to be challenged like like you've never been before. It's not like your prereqs or your undergrad, the classes you took before, those may have been hard, but it's not going to be anything like nursing school. So the last thing you need to do is place high expectations on yourself to make it even worse on you. Because nursing school, the mindset of these professors, the mindset of the curriculum is they're going to weed out the weak. Not necessarily like you're physically weak or whatever, but mentally, it's all about pressure. I actually had a question from Mayra.Dimas. I hope I'm saying your name right. I'm sorry if I'm not. But I actually had a question from her and she asked, what's the most difficult thing about nursing school? And in my opinion, the most difficult thing about nursing school is all the pressure that is on you. Because it's not necessarily that the work is hard or the content is hard. I mean, it's hard, but it's it's learnable it's like teachable like you can grasp it after you spend time on it just like anything else that you've ever learned before like you might not get it the very first time but as you practice as you study you start connecting the dots however the hardest thing about nursing school is the time constraint you're expected to learn a lot in a short amount of time you're expected to do a lot in a short amount of time and they move at a very fast pace so the last thing you need to do is set the bar up here and is like oh i'm gonna be a 4.0 student because let me tell you something a lot of people that are 4.0 students that come into nursing school, they all at least fail one exam during their nursing school journey. And that's actually me being conservative about that because to be honest with you, me and my nursing school friends, we at least failed one or two or three exams. Just It could be one in three different classes or it could be multiple in one class, but we at least failed multiple exams within one semester. So every semester we were failing at least one and that's conservative, one is conservative. And so I want you to keep that in mind because I don't want you thinking that you failing one exam, two exams, however many exams means that you aren't equipped for nursing or you're not meant for nursing because that's not the case. It's just a new ball game. The questions and the tests are different. I'm gonna get into that a little bit later, but just keep that in mind going into this have an open mind most people change their mindset from wanting straight a's to i'm just gonna see my way through the degree because in nursing school 
most nursing schools actually have a limit or a grade that they cut off that you cannot fail past that grade or anything below that grade is failing. So for my nursing school, we could not have below a 75. And I've even heard other people at other nursing schools who they could not have below an 80 in any class at the end. Otherwise, that's considered failing. So you're already going to be graded on a different scale than you're probably used to because you probably could get away with getting a D in a class in the past. However, that does not cut out for nursing school because they will fail you and probably hold you back. And keep in mind that these professors that you're coming across, they have dedicated their entire life to nursing. They've been nursing at the bedside or whatever for like 20, 30 years and now they're a professor. So they're like hardcore nursing lovers so you know they want to weed out the wheat they want to make sure that anyone that's going through the program or when they eventually graduate that you're going to be a competent nurse you're going to be a good nurse that you're doing all of this for a good reason and not for the wrong reasons you might feel like professors can be really really cruel but i feel like all professors deep deep down is coming from a good place because a big thing in nursing is safety i mean you're literally signing up to take care of sick patients and their life is on the line and you are their lifeline so when you think of it like that it is very serious and it's not anything to be you know playing about next i want to talk about organization so to start off i want to talk about the syllabus or syllabi that you will be getting for multiple classes typically when you start nursing school most of the professors are going to go ahead and send you the syllabus for their class well before you actually go to class so usually this can be a week before or a couple of days before or whatever usually i recommend that you go ahead and print out that syllabus for every single class and have it physically in front of you and to just go ahead and skim through and highlight through little important details for each class in each syllabus you don't necessarily have to know everything that the syllabus is talking about because you might read things and be like what the heck is that don't worry about that because on the first day of school you're going to go through the syllabus with the professor she's going to read through or he's going to read through the syllabus and go through exactly what they're talking about what what little assignments they're referencing to they're going to go into detail about that but the purpose of you skimming over this beforehand is really to help you feel less overwhelmed and less anxious when you're actually in class going over the syllabus with the professor because what happens is what if you have all your classes that one day what if all your nursing classes the schedule is you guys go to all your classes on monday or something so the very first day you're going to go to like these classes four or five classes and you're all going to have to go through the syllabus for at least an hour or two if you're like me and you're not a morning person it's going to be a lot of information at once and if your mind is not even you know really working that early like mine was not you're going to one probably clock out and two you might feel like oh my gosh this is like so much information like how am i going to keep up with this and if you haven't even looked at the syllabus now you're looking at the syllabus and you're listening to the professor and they're not going to repeat everything they're not gonna, they're probably not even going to read everything on the syllabus to you because the expectation is that you can read so i'm not going to read every little line we're just going to talk about the main points or the important points and it kind of eliminates any shock factor because if you already skimmed the syllabus just even a little bit like i said even if you don't know what everything entails when the professor is talking about it you're not going to be just like oh my gosh like what i can't believe this is this is what's gonna go on in this class what do they mean like this project like you're not gonna be shocked because you already skimmed the syllabus you already somewhat knew like you know what was expected i used to print out all the syllabus and then actually had a folder or a binder strictly for the syllabus and i would have every class in a different clear divider and i would have that binder that folder be specifically just my syllabus so that i always could reference back to it when i would go on to plan my calendar just in case i needed to refresh my memory on an assignment for a class or when is something coming up like because usually most syllabus have a calendar for that class usually in the middle or at the end of the syllabus just listing out you know the lecture and when are you gonna have your exams and if you have a quiz or whatever when is that it's all in a syllabus so that needs to be like your nursing school bible you need to always have it with you i always had it with me um, just so that I can reference back to like I said and it really helps me stay organized it made me feel less anxious so be sure to do that next I want to talk about getting a planner so whether you like a physical planner you know like a book calendar book whatever that you can actually write on or a virtual planner like a calendar app or something or just maybe the calendar on your iPhone whichever one you prefer go with what works best for you but I absolutely recommend that you have a planner of some sort because it's almost impossible for you to keep everything in your head 
I did know nursing students that did that. However, you're just putting yourself at an increased risk at forgetting something. And honestly, most nursing schools, if anything, your only grade is your exam. So if any of your classes give quizzes or little case studies or any kind of homework that could help boost your grade, you do not want to forget about those little assignments. It might be a small percentage of your grade. You might think like, I don't care about this 10%, but I promise you, like I said, nursing school is so challenging and people are usually failing multiple exams that that 10% can make or break your grade. So the last thing you want to do is forget a miscellaneous assignment that's honestly considered easy because all you had to do was put effort in actually doing it by the deadline. So I totally recommend getting a planner of some sort. I personally had a physical planner and I had a virtual planner towards the end of my nursing school journey just because I was not keeping up with my physical planner as well. So I've dabbled in both. What works for somebody else might not work for you and what works for you in one semester or in one class might not be applicable in the next class or next semester. So you just always have to be able to be flexible and adapt and do whatever works for you. So that's gonna be the biggest theme in this whole video is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna reference back to that a lot. So just keep that in mind, okay? So what I actually recommend if you're starting nursing school, if this is your first semester, what I did with my physical planner or just, you know, if you're choosing virtual, what you should do with your planner is with the syllabus, if you have the reference binder or folder like I did, it's going to list everything in a calendar format to let you know what you should expect for the whole semester. Do not go into your planner and write the whole calendar schedule for the entire semester already in your planner, especially if you have a physical planner and it's not something that you can, you know, easily fix. Like if you just fill up all your calendar, you just fill up all your lines for every single month or something all the way three months out. Don't do that because you never know what's going to change. So I always recommend just writing out the schedule for two to three weeks. You definitely want to know what's going on this week. And you definitely want to have an idea of what's going on next week. And if you really want to be on top of it, usually exams fall around the third week um, and it's in a rotation. So if you wanted to go ahead and maybe put what's going on the third week, maybe not assignments, but exams or anything big, I will go all the way out to three weeks. But I don't really go past three weeks just because, like I said, you just never know what's going to change. I mean, if you were like me and COVID hit in the middle of your nursing school semester or whatever, then you know that kind of jacked up the calendar for every single class because we had to adapt and modify, you know, what's the new schedule. So you want to leave room for things to change. Unless you're going the virtual planner route, then obviously with that, you can always, you know, delete and whatever. But, you know, save yourself some time because what if you have to go in and change up the whole calendar now because you already had it all typed up. So just do two to three weeks, save yourself some time, and that should keep you on top of things. Piggybacking on how you should plan out your school calendar, I also recommend maybe writing things down multiple times. So even though you wrote everything out for two to three weeks, maybe as you go on to that week or like the week of, you have a little sticky note, a little checklist of what you have to do this week that's upcoming, that's right away, that's immediate. Because even though you already written it down in your planner and you can go look at your planner a bunch of times, whatever, I used to highlight through my planner whenever I would finish task or when that lecture was done or when that exam was taken or whatever. But sometimes it just helps writing down things a second time. So sometimes even though it's already in my planner, I would get a sticky note and just write out again, okay, what are the assignments? What is something I physically have to do? Because sometimes I didn't care about what they're lecturing me about this week. I'm gonna find out when I go to class. But if I had a quiz or a case study or something extra I needed to do that was something that I actually needed to do and submit or something like that, I liked writing it down on a sticky note and then just crossing that out again because that way it just made me feel like I was on top of things and it decreases the likelihood that you're going to forget about something because you've written it down like twice now. Lastly, for organization, I want to talk about time management. So there's not a definite one way for me to tell you how you should manage your time because like I said earlier in the video, you really have to figure out what works best for you and that is going to be different than the next person or you know, it might be different one class to the next. So there's no definitive way for me to say, oh, this is the best way to time manage because it might not work for you. Honestly, if I was doing half the things my other peers were doing as far as when they decided to study or how long they decided to study for each class or whatever, I probably would not have done as well as I did because 
that wouldn't have worked for me. So I worked throughout nursing school the entire time. I basically didn't have a choice because I supported myself and I pretty much kept a full-time job the entire time. So I didn't have the luxury or, you know, the advantage of being able to just be all about school and just be a student. So, you know, for me, what worked for me as far as time management looked different than someone that maybe all they're doing is school and they're, you know, living with their parents or, you know, maybe they have financial aid that's covering their housing and they just, you know, they don't have to work. So the times that I decided to study or when I decided to do stuff for each class, it was way different. I remember in nursing school, almost every professor was like basically making it seem like, oh, for my class and for every nursing school class, you need to dedicate two hours of studying per day. And we had like five, six classes. I was just like... Come again? <laughs> like that is not even realistic. Like come on. Or they won't say like all your classes need two hours, but they'll be like, oh my class, my class needs, you need to study two hours per day. And that's the only way you're gonna be successful in my class. And it's like, they know their class is like one out of five. And it's just like, like I said, it's not realistic. So it really is different per class because every class is going to be different. You, one class might be super easy to you and you might not have to dedicate a lot of time or you might not have to study way in advance for that class because the information just comes to you. And then the next class might be so, so hard. You might be pouring all your resources, all your time, everything on this class because you're not understanding the information and you're trying to make sure that you're going to pass this class. Some classes I would literally study a day two before some classes i was studying a week before don't get into this mindset of like you have to do it this one way because of the next person or whatever even if the professor says so that may not be the case you just have to do what works for you and if it works for you who cares what everybody else is doing if you're working through nursing school don't be discouraged about that either because it's all about whether or not you really want this you know do you really want this are you going to put in the work? You know, people will always ask anyone in our school, how did you do this? How did you do that? And honestly, my answer is like, when you don't have a choice, when you don't have any other option, you have to do what you, you, you have to do what you have to do. You know what I mean? So even if you're working, you are going to be okay. You might look like crap. You might feel like crap, but it's going to be temporary. And that's what I always tell people as well is like, you know, how did you do this during that semester or whatever? Because I knew it was temporary. That's the only thing that kept me going. If you Do you think that if I knew that this would be my lifestyle for the rest of my life, I could keep it going for a very long time? No. But if I know this is only for this semester, which is like three, four months, I'm only going to have to struggle, <laughs> struggle for these three, four months. I'm fine. Like I can push through and make it happen because I knew I wanted to be a nurse. I knew I wanted to, you know, pass or I wanted to graduate. So if you're at least in that mindset, then you're going to be fine. Do what works for you. Test it all out. Test it out. You know, just trial and error everything. You know, like try out if studying for this class a week in advance or two weeks in advance was good enough for to get the grade that you wanted on that exam or good enough to pass that exam. Or if things come up unexpectedly and you all of a sudden only have a weekend to study for this test on Monday or something, you know, still just give it your best, give it your all and see how that works out for you. Because only then is when you'll know, you know, if something is working for you or not. That's the only way you're gonna know is when you get that test result back, you're going to find out very quickly, okay, did that work for me or no? Know yourself well enough to know that hey I know this class is hard for me I'm not even gonna downplay it I'm probably going to dedicate two weeks for this class like I'm going to study so far in advance for this class because I know I'm not strong in this class versus this class I can wait till the weekend because I know for a fact I understand everything I'm never lost in this class everything clicks so you know it's going to take a level of self-awareness for you to be able to differentiate between what you can get away with in one class and what you can get away with in another class so just keep that in mind and you know be able to adapt like I said once you have that experience once you go through that first exam and you get that result back you're going to be able to find out you know all right is that efficient is what I'm doing efficient enough for this class okay yes or no so Take it from there. Next, we're going to talk about studying and test taking. 
Um, I had a question from one of a kind underscore. She asked me, did I have any pointers on how to study and how did I get through mental health in adult one? When it comes to studying, as you will see, we're going to go back to the theme of this. You have to figure out what learning style works best for you. And sometimes that takes trial and error as well because you might study one way for one class and you might study a completely different way from a different class. And you just have to be able to be self-aware and know, you know, what can you get away with in one class and what can't, can't you in another class? Because I know the biggest, biggest study tip um, that most people say during nursing school is, oh, write everything out. Write it, write it all out. When you're studying, write all the content out, you know, make cute notes, have different color pens, you know, yes, all of that is helpful, all of that is great. However, it's not realistic, it's not sustainable for every single class. You know, if this is a class that comes to me that I feel like I don't really struggle with, I don't think I need to write all the content out over and over and over again with different color pens. I mean, great if I choose to. However, is that really me efficiently using my time? You have to think smarter, not harder. You know, work smarter, not harder. Oh, I'm sorry guys if you hear my stomach growling. But it's true that you have to truly, you know, work smarter, think smarter rather than harder because you don't want to waste any time. And I've honestly gone through all of these learning styles in different ways and different combinations for different classes. So I'm just going to let you guys know, you know, what, what kind of learning styles there are, what I've seen, what my friends have done and what I have done. And like I said, I've pretty much done at least all these things for at least one class and in different combination because sometimes you might combine multiple ways to study for a particular class depending on the difficulty level so you know going back to what i said yes writing everything out in different color pens that is a great way to help you remember sometimes you can remember back like oh i remember i remember the answer to this it was in blue what was it and you can think back to what that was that you wrote down for that class or whatever it helps you build that muscle memory however you know, you might not need to do that for every class. I've had classes where I type notes on Google Docs or I've known people who while they're in class, while the teacher's lecturing, they're actually going ahead and making note cards on Quizlet. Like they're typing up what the teacher's talking about and going ahead and making note cards already. I've had people who write the notes or I've written the notes and then turned around and out of those notes created Quizlets or typed it up on Google Docs just so everything could be organized and seamless and I can make things different colors or whatever. So, you know, I've done both those things and that just varies depending on the class so you know initially you may want to write everything for every class and then depending on how you feel about that class you can shift you know based on your comfort level with the content if you do best listening to something over and over most professors will let you record their lecture or some professors actually upload like an audio of them teaching the lecture so if you're the type of person that you want to hear it or you like to hear back to lectures, you know, record the teacher or listen to the lectures online or wherever they post the lecture. Sometimes I've had it where I'm writing notes in class and I'm also recording the teacher and maybe the teacher is talking too fast. So as I'm writing notes, if I can't keep up, I just face down and just write on the side like what time or you know when you're recording it's popping up all the minutes i go ahead and write out and jot on the side like what time was that that i had to space out leave this big old space and when i listen back i'll fill in the space with what the teacher was saying because i'm not trying to fall back behind while i'm in class because i know once these three hours or however many hours is up with this professor that's it so you know sometimes that recording is kind of like insurance or something for you to reference back to or a way for you to have have that backup just in case you're not getting everything in that one sitting with that professor if you're a visual person you know maybe you want to study diagrams in the book or you want to pull the diagrams and pictures that the professor includes in their PowerPoint or maybe you want to draw your own diagrams and pictures and that's what's going to help you connect all the dots for everything if you're a hands-on learner you know see if your school has simulation or a lab or whatever that has physical things you can touch and physical equipment like whatever they're teaching see if there's like something physical for you to actually touch and feel and actually see for yourself in order to help you learn you know what it is that they're teaching you whether it's skills or you know disease processes or whatever like sometimes sometimes professors will actually bring you know a demo of something to better illustrate you know what they're going to teach that day so if you're that type of person look into things like that you could be a type of person that just likes to read like you're just an avid reader and maybe you're a genius like I know this one guy that was in my cohort he was like seriously a genius like he would just read the book and it would just stay in his mind and I think I think he said he read all the time like he was just an avid reader so sometimes you can just get away with doing that you know it's just 
whatever works for you. Some some people can just read and then, you know, it just stays in their mind. They don't have to write it down. They don't have to type it up. They don't do anything. They just read over and over and over again. The, the common theme is to just figure out what works best for you, okay? So don't get caught up in what somebody else is doing for this class. The only time I recommend doing that is if you're failing the class or, you know, you're three exams in and you're still not getting the grade that you want and you're borderline passing or like I said, maybe you're failing the class and your friend or someone you know is doing very, very well in the class. That's when I would recommend that you see, you know, or ask them, hey, like, what are you doing for this class? Like, you're doing so great in this class and I'm struggling in this class. What are, what are you doing different? And even, even with what they tell you, take it with a grain of salt and, you know, manipulate it into something that works for you because yeah i've asked advice from people you know how are you doing so well in this class and then i find out they're doing like this super extra 10 hours worth of work i'm like okay yeah no wonder you have a hundred i don't have time for that so you know i had to take what they said with a grain of salt and figure out okay how can i switch this around to make it work for my schedule and like fit my lifestyle because clearly you know Clearly, I don't have enough time. Sometimes I'm like at the end of the semester, I'm like, I don't have time to do all that now. I'm trying to figure out how to pass this next exam so that I can pass the class. Another thing I want to mention is that when it comes to nursing school, you're going to realize that the tests are very different than what you've probably been accustomed to because nursing school questions are not just straightforward. They're not, what is the wrong answer? And you pick that one wrong answer. That's not how nursing school questions are set up. You will realize that very quickly as you know, you get some experience with taking those exams you're going to see that most nursing school questions are basically set up where they ask you a question and all the answer choices are right and your goal or your, your job is to pick the most right answer for that specific scenario or that specific whatever so you know in the past when you're studying you study all the right stuff and it's so easy to pick out in an exam like the right one the right answer versus all the wrong answers because all the wrong answers are wrong and you know that because you didn't read that at any point in time when you were studying nursing school exams all the answers are right so you've came across all of those answers and so what makes it hard is that it's no longer about memorization there's some things you can memorize yes but when it gets to these exams sometimes most of the time it's a lot of critical thinking involved and that's something that develops over time and with experience and with practice so like i said you're going to see all the answer choices and you're going in the back of your mind you're gonna be like okay yeah, yeah all these are right yeah i remember studying all of these but which one is the most right for this specific question this specific scenario hmm and it's gonna make you have to really think because a lot of times this the question is scenario based so you have to plug you have to think about multiple things that's going on in the question so you know keep that in mind and know that it's going to be a, a learning curve in itself to even take a nursing school exam and so when it comes to test taking i always tell people use your first round of exams as a way to fill out that professor like that's my biggest tip when especially if this is your first semester and you've never taken a nursing school exam ever whatever or i do this with every semester to be honest because you're going to have different professors that first round of exams for all those classes yes you're going to study the content you want to know the content but when you're taking the exam try to see what kind of questions does this professor ask you the most what is important to this professor and you can tell you know, if you're paying attention to that kind of stuff, you can tell what does this professor prioritize? What is important in this professor's eyes? Because at the end of the day, they're the one writing the test. So you want to kind of have that insight or you want to be aware of, you know, what kind of question does this professor keep asking me? I've had professors who they were really big on nursing considerations or nursing interventions. And then I've had other professors who are really big on you knowing what that disease is and the actual science behind it, you know? So it's different for every professor. And so when you're taking their exam, try to, you know, obviously you're answering the question, you're trying to like do well on the test, but try to keep in mind, okay, when I took this exam, what did I see the most? Like if it's like, for example, if this is pharmacology, I would notice, wow, like he asked a lot on adverse reactions. Like he was really big on that. I didn't even get barely one question on mode of action. So going forward, I know when I'm studying for his class, I'm not going to focus a lot on mode of action. I'm still going to study it. I'm still going to have a gist but obviously that's not what's important to him what's important to him is adverse reactions so i need to make sure that i put more effort in studying adverse reactions so that's what i mean by it's kind of scoping out that professor you'll see that some professors they will only teach what they talked about then you'll go and take a test 
for another professor and you'll realize what the heck are they even testing me on because I they did not talk about any of this or this was not in the PowerPoint or whatever, you know? So then that's when you know, okay, moving forward, I need to really read the book for this class because that professor is like pulling stuff from thin air. I don't know where they're getting it from, but clearly it's not from their mouth or from their PowerPoint. So I need to study the book. And then some professors, you don't ever even need to get the book. You could return the book, sell the book, whatever you want to do, because the book doesn't even matter. They're only testing you on what they provided you or what they told you. So, you know, scope your professor out, figure out, what's important to them and whether or not their teaching aligns with their tests. Okay, so that's my biggest tip as far as test taking goes. First round of exams, that's when you're probably going to fail the most, like even if it's even if you're two, three semesters in, you know what I mean? Because it's still the first round. You don't know about that professor yet and you're gonna find out. Don't go into it with the mindset of I need to ace, just aim to pass. And even if you're not passing, it's not the end of the world. I tell people all the time, do not be discouraged if you're still failing a class even after your second exam. I don't know how many exams you may have, but for my nursing school, usually it would be like four or five or maybe six if you're counting the final. But usually I think it's four or five counting the final as well. But regardless, even if you're three exams in and you're quote unquote failing, especially if it's just like by a couple of points, I tell people do not pull themselves out. Do not drop the class. Do not, I mean, obviously, let me digress real quick. Obviously, if you truly genuinely feel like you're not gonna make the class and for whatever reason you need to pull out or drop it so that you don't like be eliminated from nursing school, then do what's best for you. But I always strongly encourage people to just push through because you never know what exam is gonna be your breakthrough. I failed, been failing a class, and it wasn't all the way until like the third or fourth exam that I had a breakthrough and just it clicked for me and I understood the professor and I understood what they wanted and boom, I made a 90 on like my third or fourth exam and now now I'm okay. Now I'm, I'm not gonna fail that class. So you just never know what's gonna be the turning point for you. And so you just wanna make sure that you're not gonna make any decisions that, you know, definite decisions that you are going to regret or think back about and think like, wow, should I just stayed? Should I just not drop that? You know, you don't want to be in that, that kind of mindset because then, you know, you're gonna feel bad. Like you're gonna, you know, that can make you really sad. So just try to push through, try to motivate yourself, uplift yourself, manifest, whatever you need to do, pray and stick it through. Because like I said, you never know what your turning point will be. And honestly, you might think you're the only one, but you're probably not. Everyone in nursing school likes to look like they're keeping it together and they're probably going home and crying because that's what I was doing. So, you know, and I know I wasn't the only one because my friends were crying too. So, you know, just stick it out. You got this. And to go back to one of a kind underscores question about how did I get through adult one and mental health, I want to say a main campus, Loewenberg, I know for a fact they changed adult one professor and I believe they changed the mental health professor as well. So when I was in those classes, the adult one professor, he only taught what he said. He was very big on nursing interventions. He gave us this, you know, acronym of like WWKYP, which is what would kill your patient. So he always wanted to make us think of the worst case scenario in order to help us pick out the right answer. We're thinking worst case scenario, like what answer would we pick? So he was very big on that, but I know that he left for sure. So I can't really speak on Loewenberg main campus right now as far as how to help those students get through adult one because I don't have any experience with that professor, the new professor, but that's how I got through adult one. I just wrote notes and I recorded him and I listened back to him and studied my notes pretty much. Mental health, the professor I believe is different like I said now but with my mental health I once again pretty much just listened to the teacher she was like phenomenal she loved you can tell she loved mental health she was awesome like I think my cohort was actually the first to have her so if she's not around I'm not sure like I said I'm not sure if they change mental health professor for sure for sure or not but if she's not around that really sucks because she was like so great her energy was awesome in class. But anyways, so that's how I got through both those classes. I wrote the notes and I just studied the notes and I didn't record the mental health teacher because she was so great. Like her energy, enthusiasm, everything. It was hard to forget her lectures, you know? So that's how I got through both of those classes. As far as study groups and tutoring goes, study groups, 
just make sure it's not a social session. I honestly, I tried study groups here and there and you know, all it takes is like another person to be a study group. So even if it's just you and your other friend, it doesn't necessarily have to be like, oh, you guys are gonna meet up and have to talk about everything. Sometimes, a lot of times when my friends and I, I'm sorry, this sun, I need to. Okay guys, I'm just gonna back up. <laughs> I'm gonna switch position. What I was saying about study groups, you know, sometimes it doesn't necessarily mean that you and your friend need to talk about everything when you guys meet up. Sometimes it's just that accountability partner. I met up with a lot of my friends one-on-one -on -one, and we would just go to school or go to like one of our places or go to a coffee shop and we would just spend all day together in silence because we're both trying to study for the same class but in our different ways and you know, that's all we wanted. We just wanted the other person there to trauma bond together. You know, you're gonna make great friends in nursing school because we're all trauma bonding because everyone is going through the same stuff and you know, you're gonna realize that like nobody outside of nursing school gets you or understands, but you know, your nursing school friend understands we're going through it together. So sometimes you just like the fact that there's that other person there and it's just comforting knowing that we're both stressed out. We're both don't know what we're doing. We're both trying to figure it out together, you know? But if you do like big study groups or just, you know, you do like to talk it out with your friends, that's fine. I know that works for some people. Me personally, I like to study by myself or if I did study with my friend, we were pretty much silent the whole time. If we did dialogue or talk about it, it would probably be like right before the exam, the morning of a couple hours before, we're just kind of like bouncing off like, you know, did you study this? Okay, let's go over this. And, you know, sometimes we would share, you know, funny ways that we remember stuff. And it actually was very helpful because I've had experience and so has my friends where we are, you know, we're taking the exam and we come across a question and I think of what my friend said or they thought of what I said and we just, you know, remember that little comment and that's what got us that, that answer. Sometimes that dialogue really does help you remember. But like I said, just make sure it's not a social session. Make sure that you're actually doing what's best for you and not working against you because I have heard where people, you know, get into these study groups and then they don't, they don't talk about nursing at all. So watch out for that. Tutoring, sometimes your school may offer tutoring or maybe a student that's like acing that class may offer tutoring services or maybe just want to help you out because like I said, we're all trauma bonding. We all, we should all want, you know, to level up together and get out of this together. But sometimes it's from a peer and sometimes teachers actually offer extra time outside of their usual class time to give like, I think they call it TLC, like teacher learning some center, maybe, maybe that's what that stands for. But it was basically the professor would actually, you know, go into more details or answer questions for students in a tutoring session. And sometimes, you know, students like that better because they, I mean, obviously that's a professor, they're writing the test, you want to know, you know, that's, that's your that's your extra time with them to build that rapport. Whichever one works best for you, whichever one you feel like is the most helpful, go with that because I've definitely done both. Like I've gone to peer tutoring and I've gone to a teacher tutoring session and you know, and it helped me because obviously I graduated from nursing school. So yeah, you want to just do whatever is best for you. My biggest test taking tip that I can give to you guys that I've actually given to me from a travel nurse one day when I was working in the nail shop i was doing her pedicure and she gave me this very valuable test taking tip that i'm going to share with you guys because it literally got me through nursing school especially for my very very hard classes and especially on my NCLEX is when you're taking the test especially if this is a really hard class read the answers first and then your question that changed things significantly for me because sometimes when you're reading the question first and you read then you go to the answers like i said the answers 99.9% .9 of the time, they're all right. They might not be affiliated with that question or whatever, but they're all right to some extent. And so sometimes when you're reading the question and maybe you don't know the answer to the question right off the top of your head, you start trying to justify why all these answers may be the one. You know what I mean? You start trying to, you know, think somewhere in your head, dig up somewhere why every single one could be the one versus when you read the answers first, nine out of 10 times or eight out of 10 times when you read the answers first, in your mind, in my mind anyways, I already know what the question is asking me based on the answers. And sometimes, sometimes, you know, it's like a 50-50 whether or not I'm going to just know which one is actually the one and whether or not I'm just like, oh, this is all free game. Like I would say for me, it was like seven out of 10 times, I instantly like, my gut was like, 
that's the answer. Like I read all the answers already. And when I read the question or when I already had an idea what the question was and I went to verify that this is, this is probably what the question is about. I like my gut was like, Oh, that's the answer then. And that's another thing is that's a big tip in nursing school. You hear it again and again and again, trust your gut unless you can absolutely explain why the answer choice that wasn't your initial choice is the one versus it's just a better choice than the one that you initially wanted to go with. So if it's not, if you can't just absolutely tell yourself or tell anyone why the one that you didn't go with at first, you feel like that's the one, why you feel like that's the one versus you just feel like that's better than the one you wanted to go with, just go with your gut. Go with your gut. More times than not, your gut was right and so many nursing students you're gonna experience this like you're gonna be like oh my gosh i was gonna put that in up and i changed my answer last minute or i did put that and then i changed my answer so just go with your gut even if it's wrong you're just like okay whatever because most of the time your gut is right so even if it's wrong the one or two three times that's probably not gonna make or break your grade so just go with your gut you hear that all the time, but my biggest test taking tip is really to read the answers first and then the question, especially if it's a very hard class. I know I mentioned working in nursing school a little while ago, but I just wanted to go back to that and let you guys know or give you guys some further advice on, you know, just working. So one, yes, your job has to be pretty flexible because more than likely most nursing schools, they give you your schedule. You don't get to pick your classes or pick when you have clinicals. If your nursing school lets you do that, please let me know what nursing school that is because that would be extremely nice. But most nursing schools, they give you your schedule and that's what it is. And more than likely, unless you're gonna go up all these chains, more than likely they're not gonna like change your schedule just because you need to work on this day or something like that. Even if you're juggling like a family or whatever your circumstance is, don't let anyone tell you that you're not gonna get into nursing school or anything remotely in that same category just because of your circumstances. Honestly, if somebody's telling you that, look at them a little crazy and just like, just wonder whether or not they're really in your corner. You know what I mean? Because why would you say something like that to me? Like that's not very encouraging. When you have no choice, you can do unbelievable things. I did have people in my cohort that did have families. They were older, this might've been their second career. And they were like, you know, superhumans. They got, they passed too, they graduated too. So, so to close out my video, I do have a final question from Gabby underscore Lucero. I hope I'm saying your names right. <laughs> but she asked me, how did I stay motivated through ups and downs of nursing school? And honestly, I prayed a lot throughout nursing school and I also manifested or wrote down affirmations. I did that for every single semester, before the semester, during the semester, before a test. Anytime I felt overly anxious or whatever, I would pray, I would cry, I would just release in any way that I could. The one thing about going through nursing school is that, you know, you're not exempt from stuff happening in your personal life. I know me personally, when I was going through nursing school, I went through a breakup. I moved like two, three times. I switched jobs. So, you know, life is not going to just stop happening because you're going through nursing school. I mean, wouldn't that be great if, if you know, if that's just how it works, but it doesn't. Don't expect to be exempt from things happening because things will happen. And that's when you have to decide, you know, what you need to do, what's best for you. Do you believe in yourself? Because at the end of the day, if you do not believe in yourself, who's going to believe in you? If you don't even believe that you're going to be able to get through nursing school and become a nurse and be amazing and all this and all that, Who's gonna believe? Who's gonna believe that? I'm not gonna lie, sometimes you will stray away from it. You will feel like you're not competent or maybe this is not meant for you. You will question it, but how long you stay in that pit is what really defines, you know, whether or not this is really for you. Because if you're constant, if that is more, if you're feeling more like that, more so than feeling confident or feeling like, you know what, I can defy all odds. I can do this. I am meant to be nurse. I am passionate about nursing. I want to do this. Da 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 da. If the negative outweighs the positive, then that's when I would say reevaluate whether or not this is for you. But more than likely, you didn't get here for no reason. You're not in nursing school for no reason. You know, everything happens for a reason. And don't, you know, don't let the negativity consume you and make you feel otherwise. That's all I have for this video. I know this is probably a super long video. I know I probably went on tangents and stuff. I'm sorry about that. But this is something I'm really passionate about. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, clearly. But I hope that's pretty clear to you guys. And I want everyone to succeed. I want everyone to progress and pass nursing school. This is why I'm starting this nursing series because, you know, no one from, I know from my school specifically, I didn't have anyone that was ahead of me that really just, I could reach out to and ask advice. And I've had people who, you know, are like, 
are following me DM me for advice and when I actually respond and we're having like these essays of conversations they're like girl like you're the only person that's done this like da 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 like you know they just they haven't gotten that advice about our program or whatever and that's really unfortunate because I don't understand why why is that that's the case if you're there for the right reasons if you're doing things for the right reasons and you're actually passionate about this then I want you to win too so that's why I started this nursing series and I really hope that anyone watching this video if you made it to the end please comment below and let me know the sun is all up in my face again <laughs> if you made it to the end of the video please let me know um, comment below and if you feel like this video may be valuable to anyone else that you may know maybe it's your peer maybe it's someone that you know that's going through nursing school whatever please share my video to that person help me grow <laughs> and so that I can help more people help me help you help others I definitely appreciate it if you made it to the end I appreciate you guys click on this video and supporting me in any way if you haven't already please consider subscribing to my channel I will get back on to uploading regularly now I, I I had stuff going on so I did miss the past two weeks but I'm back on and I'm ready to go full force so you know please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already what did you gain from this video if you gained anything so please comment below let me know I love like talking with you guys if you haven't already please go over to Instagram and follow me because I do interact mostly on Instagram and I don't use Twitter or anything so Instagram is my sole social media outside of YouTube so if you guys want to interact with me I do polls a lot I ask for feedback a lot on my Instagram so please be sure to head over to Instagram and follow me I really truly truly really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart like anytime anyone ever like sends me a message saying that they watched or you know they're talking to me about my own content I truly appreciate all the feedback even if it's constructive criticism I want to I want it all you know that's probably the longest closeout I've had in any of my videos but yeah don't forget to follow me on Instagram subscribe like comment thank you so much for watching thank you so much for supporting me and I will see you guys later